the right analog stick. This is synonymous with one thing, and that one thing is the combat in Rise of Honor starring Jet Li, baby. And it's also known for controlling the camera. When video games went from 2D to 3D, this also introduced 3D camera control. Now I love being able to see just as much as the next person, but the right stick is mostly just used for controlling the camera and nothing more. There are some exceptions out there, but there's only one entity that uses the right stick for a multitude of different things. Jet Li! No, I'm talking about sports games. It's ironic because sports themselves have like 2,135 cameras that follow the action, but these games more often than not give you zero camera control. Which is actually fine, but it's not needed as these games give you camera angles where the whole area of play is already on camera. Besides some games that feel the need to reinvent the wheel for some reason. I can't with the right stick not being used for camera control, the possibilities open for unique control schemes, and we'll be looking at some of the more interesting ones. The most famous example of right stick gameplay implementation is probably the EA Skate series. Instead of pressing face buttons to do tricks like in the Tony Hawk games, in Skate you had the Flick It system, which you had to use the right stick to do specific motions to do certain tricks. Like a pop shove it, which believe it or not has nothing to do with a prostate exam. While today this system is loved, it was more polarizing when the game first came out. There wasn't an alternative control scheme, so you had to use the Flick It system, which is something that might turn off players that came from the Tony Hawk games where you can just mash all the face buttons to do an 8 gazillion point trick. The Tony Hawk series would eventually have their own right analog stick controls with Tony Hawk Project 8, where time slows down and you could just slap the board all around with your feet. This preceded Skate, believe it or not, but it's nowhere as intuitive or good. Overall, the Flick It system is a good use of the right stick. Let's look at the exact opposite. <laughs> the ultimate controls in SmackDown vs Raw were... fine, I guess? Whenever you are in certain positions, you have a choice between moves that you initiate with the right stick. This can look a little silly because you have guys like Kurt Angle doing uncharacteristic things like benching dudes in these military press slams. You can drag your opponents towards these interactive objects, which is pretty cool. But the thing is, most of these will be countered so fast, not unless you are playing on, like, easy mode. Alright, here we go. Ten punches in the corner, baby. Aw, oh, shit. Let's try again. Ten punches, baby. Let's go. Come on. Ten punches. Come on. What the hell? Maybe I could do something to the ref. Come on. Here we go. You've gotta be kidding me! In addition to this, they changed the control scheme where the right analog stick does all the grapples as opposed to the face buttons now. This added nothing to the game. It wasn't any unique mechanic or anything. They just changed from pushing buttons to moving the stick. I assume they did this just so they can advertise that they changed something with the controls. Seriously, this added nothing to the game. The controls would eventually be reverted back to face buttons, thankfully. The ultimate control stuff had some potential, but overall it's pretty mediocre. Staying in the ring, we have the Fight Night series with total punch control. It's similar to the Flick It system in Skate, where you have to do certain gestures to throw certain punches. You can also wind up on the right stick to throw haymakers. This is more accurate to the sport of boxing, because if you're gonna deliver a life-altering CTE to some guy, then by God, it better be accurate. He is tagged fiercely by a haymaker. It sends him to the canvas. Will somebody stop the damn match! Unlike the Skate series, you actually have the ability to choose what playstyle you want. So if you want to be a loser and exclusively use buttons, you could do that. If you want to be a loser and exclusively use the right stick, you could do that. Or you could be a cool guy like me and use both buttons and the right stick simultaneously. Fight Night is one of those rare games that gives choice in the matter until Fight Night Round 4. When Fight Night Round 4 came out, the only way to play the game is using the right stick. So button users were left out, 
And there was backlash to this, believe it or not. So much of a backlash that EA had to patch in button controls. In games like this, button controls will always be favorable over stick controls because of how easy it is to use. Even a cool guy like me who uses both sticks and buttons mostly prefers buttons. While the stick controls are more accurate to boxing, if you'd exclusively use buttons, you'd have an advantage over someone who would exclusively use the right stick. Most of the time, players will go with a more convenient method, especially when it comes to competitive play. EA Sports MMA had a similar system, but everyone just used buttons. Speaking of MMA, the UFC Undisputed series had right stick controls, but mostly for the grappling. You would use motions in order to transition to different grappling positions. It was fine, but it could be a little convoluted to a lot of players, especially players that don't know the terminology. Like people who refer to this position as a 69, I'm referring to you. Whoa, what? What is he doing? Heading on over to Madden, we had the famous hit stick that was introduced in Madden 2005. Pushing the stick up for a high hit and down for a low hit. You'll be handing out CTE like Skittles at Halloween and straight up murdering people. And that's pretty fitting considering who they had on the cover. Anyway, Madden 06 had a much more polarizing right stick feature. The QB Vision Cone. This lets you control a light cone with the right stick. This is supposed to simulate a QB going through his progression to make a pass as opposed to just pressing one button. You have to overlap your intended receiver with the cone. If you don't do that, you're going to resemble Conor McGregor throwing the football as opposed to a pro football quarterback. There are two camps of people when it comes to this. The simulation crowd that says it's more realistic for a quarterback to make reads and have a field of view to throw the ball. Then you have the more casual crowd that thinks this is overly complicated and think passing the ball should just be a press of one button. I personally am not a fan of the QB vision cone. You could say simulation, but moving around this Metal Gear Solid ass vision cone around the field is much slower and much more cumbersome than just moving your eyes and head like you would in real life. Sure, you could snap the vision cone onto specific receivers with another button press. But number one, that goes against the concept of this video. And number two, if you see a receiver open, why press extra buttons just to get the ball to him? It's unnecessarily cumbersome. Much like Fight Night's total punch control, players would stick to regular passing. And the QB vision cone would see itself out. Staying with football, Backbreaker was a game that would have sex with the right analog stick if it could, as the game is revolved around it. Jukes, tackles, and everything in between. Backbreaker tried this simulation style of play, which meant push the camera so close to the player's back you can examine their head for lice. This is done when you are quarterbacking as well, because they went with this Madden QB vision cone route but much objectively worse. In Backbreaker, you have to scroll through each receiver one by one by flicking the right stick left and right, then push the right stick up to throw the ball to that receiver, or pull the stick back and push it forward for a lob pass. When pushing the stick forward, you can inadvertently switch receivers which is annoying. Once again, in real life, you can scan the field 10 times faster than you could doing it with this mechanic that resembles scrolling through different shows on Netflix more than it does scanning a football field. I don't get why throwing the ball has to be a damn Einstein project. On defense, you move around with the left stick, but you rotate your body with the right stick? Oh my god, a football game with tank controls? Lord help us. Backbreaker was a very ambitious game, but suffered control wise. In terms of baseball, MVP NCAA Baseball is a game that's loaded with acronyms in the title, but also had right stick controls too. Rock and fire pitching and load and fire batting. These names are a little suggestive. Both had you using the right stick for pitching and hitting respectively. And they are quite good. MLB 2K9 had a pitching mechanic where you had to copy certain motions as accurately as you can and each pitch had a different motion to follow. MLB The Show would eventually pull a heist of the century and steal features from both MVP Baseball and MLB 2K. No joke. 
I'm serious. MLB The Show has a lot of different options when it comes to playstyles, but it seems that the 2K pitching ripoff is the most popular amongst them, at least in terms of the right analog stick ones. Because while it's harder to do, it gives the competitive advantage over the easier options, which the same can't be said for all the other earlier games. Basketball and soccer games mostly use the right stick for dribbling, and there's really not much more to say about them. Do specific motions for certain dribbles. NHL games use the right stick for shooting. Pull the stick back and push it forward, or just push it forward. You do this while aiming your shot with the left stick. To take a quick snapshot, move your right stick up. To take a slap shot, move the right stick down and then up. To take a wrist shot or a backhand, move the right stick left or right and then up. Golf is the most deadly sport in the world, and the Tiger Woods PGA games actually subvert this video as the left stick has you swinging the club. If I bring it back to the right, still off the swing plane, if I bring it back right down the middle, there you go, you'll see it's right down the middle, you get a nice, perfect stroke. Hey, yo! PGA Tour 2K21 gives us right stick controls where you can inadvertently slice or hook the ball if your timing isn't right. And that's all I got. I guess there are more games that utilize the right stick better. I mean, I tried to cover all the ones that are actually interesting as opposed to stuff like, whoa, you can use the right stick to pin a guy. There's probably something from some fishing game or maybe one of those 87 rugby games that are on the PlayStation Store. But you guys let me know, did I miss anything? While there are some interesting uses for the right analog stick, nothing will ever beat the legendary use of combat in Jet Li. <laughs> Damn, he ain't gonna be in rush hour three. <laughs> <laughs>